with us guys before we start the broadcast tonight. Worship with us, guys, before we start our broadcast in about four minutes. God bless you. To overflow. Share this video right away as well with your loved ones, your friends. God bless you, Pastor. Right. God bless you, sir. Hey, brother. How you doing? Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up the last show, so give me just a few minutes. No problem. A minute or so. No problem. Guys, we're just uh, connecting with KCWG The Truth, so hang tight, and we'll get started. Thank you, Jesus. Just a few minutes. And if you need to listen on the go to the live broadcast, you can call in at 716-748-0319. And you can listen from your phone. You can listen on your drive, on your radio. So, thank you. And be sure to like KCWG, The Truth Radio, on Facebook as well. My soul pouring me to overflow. God bless you guys. Let us know where you're listening from. Thank you, Lord. 
God bless you guys. Spirit of the living God, come fall afresh on me. Come awake me from my sleep. Flow through the caverns of my soul to warm me to overflow. If you're just watching right now, we're getting ready to go live with KCWG, The Truth. Amen. I love that it'll, it'll, it'll go on YouTube. Yeah. So we love that our team Unbreakables are praying for each other. We love it, you guys. Thank you. What a great support. We're getting ready to put uh, some things together for our team Unbreakable, some private pages that we'll be able to pray for each other and connect with each other on Facebook. So we got some things we're working on. So just stick with us and uh, keep praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Let your glory fill this place. of my soul pouring me to overflow hey speak overflow overflow thank you thank you for that Angela thank you for that Julie thank you guys keep us keep praying Lord we're just breaking through some portals right now we really are thank you Jesus hallelujah we worship you, Lord. We praise your holy name. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're just joining us, we're preparing to go on KCWG, and then we start our broadcast. We're just wrapping up with the, the last show at KCWG, guys, so... We'll be connecting with them in just a, just a minute or so. You have been, Lord, and you will be. You have seen. You will see. friends and family and your friend of me's to join. I'm really going to give a now word of the difference between the anointing and the glory. Awesome. Got you guys ready. Awesome. Amen. 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 Amen.
And my amazing husband, Pastor Brian, Mr. Unbreakable Warren, two-time championship belt holder, Bellator, king of the cage. You, you awesome, honey. <laughs> she was going to say something else, but this is PG. You awesome, baby. Version. You awesome. So we're welcoming all of our KCWG listeners as well as of our, our uh, Facebook Live, our Team Unbreakables. I hope you all enjoyed our visit to SoCal and we got to, to go into the studio, which we really miss broadcasting from the studio. But, uh, you know, we got to see our, our family and, and be in the house with our family again. And, and so many of you connected on, on Facebook and you were able to be a part of all that. And that... Uh, um, that show is already on YouTube, so on Prophet Gina Guy Warren, so please feel free uh, to go ahead and, and, and listen to that. You're going to want to because we talked about dreamers coming forth and schemers being removed on Pastor Brian. That's right. So, yes. was... all right. Well, this message today, all of you who uh, listen to our show, on, on KCWG, our show is called Speaking Truth and Love, and we are Truth and Love Ministry International. Our website is tnlmi.org, and please visit the website, um, and that's how you can contact us as well, as well as on Facebook, our Truth and Love Ministry International Facebook page. So we welcome you to all write on that page, on the Truth and Love page, your prayer request, you know, on, on the page. That's what it's for. So we're trying to, right, Ryan, we're trying to get everybody over to the Truth and Love Ministry International page to start posting on that as well. So... Yeah, but today our message is called Identifying End Time Carriers of the Glory. This will not be an all-inclusive Club Med Vacation Church. <laughs> I love that title. So, Isn't that awesome? Yeah. It's all going to make sense in a second, you guys, because I'm telling you, the church as a whole, it really looks like a huge click, uh, a huge, you know, Club Med, everything's paid for. Just come on in and everything you need, you know, it's already been done. Just come on into the club. And, and I think the club and days are over, Pastor Brian. You know what do you think, honey? Yeah, definitely uh, definitely for me. Um, I know my wife, she can dance and all that good stuff. She can oh, dance. Yeah. Hey, real quick, I'm just going to say this real quick. Yeah. Guys, keep us in prayer. Um, I'm not going to say what it is. That's let's, okay, let's rotator cuff. My wife, my wife has, uh, has a little injury, so... She oh. is pushing through this right now. Yeah. So she's uh, she's in pain, but um, God give her strength and uh, keep us in prayer so that we God can get through this it. message. And yeah, we've been uh, dealing with a few injuries, um, and yeah. yeah, we're pushing through, guys. Just like you guys are pushing through. So Amen. I mean, keep us in prayer. You know, the enemy is going to attack the very uh, mountain of influence that you're getting ready to take and conquer. And we are also the word and the workout. I wouldn't have touched it. We are also the word and the workout. So you know, physical fitness is. Of, of utmost importance to us as well as spiritual fitness and uh, so you know of course the enemy wants to try to attack our body so my little left wing's a little <laughs> a little broken so if I'm acting weird standing kind of weird or whatever uh, for those of you who are viewing that would be wise so but that's okay we're going to push through this I, because this message I'm really excited about it you know Brian the Lord always gives me a now word for the people and this is truly a now word please have your pens ready because there's some, some specific things that we're going to say that you're going to definitely, I mean, there are words of knowledge, there are nuggets. And for those of you who are viewing, um, and will later listen to this message and you'll see, uh, I do have a dry erase board on the qualifications to carry the glory. And we're going to go over that as well. So are you guys ready to get started? Who's ready? Because this is awesome. Here's the scriptures that you want to write down. Very important so that you know, because I'm not going to go into all of the scriptures on glory and all these scriptures on anointing. That's not what this is about. I, I really want to get to what God is doing with his end time army and what we need to be ready for to be able to go forth as the church, as the new bride, the clean bride, the consecrated bride, and what that looks like. So we can prophesy all these beautiful things are coming and the shifts are coming and promotions are coming and God's getting ready to bless us and restore everything that was been stolen and give us back everything. But if we don't have the character to sustain those amazing gifts that God gives us, it's only going to cause more damage to the body of Christ as it already has to date, right? So I would say hashtag, how's that been working for you? So 
uh, the scriptures we're, we're going to be looking into, 1 Samuel 7, verse 1. So you'll want to write that down so you can study that later on your own. 2 Samuel, the entire chapter of 6, I encourage you to read it. That's what the Holy Spirit spoke to me from uh, when I was praying. Um, actually, I was praying for Wendy Alec of, of God TV, and uh, we were praying together. And uh, uh, we probably didn't close that. And um, <laughs> just saying, because we're broadcasting out of the house, so it's kind of loud. But um, anyway, so the Lord began to speak to me uh, from this scripture. So 2 Samuel 6, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, and Psalm 67, 3. So I, I want to say something, Brian. There is definitely no doubt 100% a mighty move of God that's getting ready to be poured upon all four corners of the earth. We, I, I'm saying this as a prophet to you. I guarantee you there are going to be pockets, pockets. Now, there's a reason why there's pockets. Pockets only contain specific things. They hold specific things. So write that down. Put that on your journal notes right now, please. Pockets. Pockets are meant to carry something specific. And pockets are strategically placed on the garment. If you are following me prophetically, all of you prophetic listeners out there, I've already just threw out just a load of nuggets, prophetic wisdom right now. Hopefully you're scratching your head going, oh my Lord, I need to pray on that and look at what she just said even further after this broadcast. So there's going to be pockets of the glory being poured out. I didn't say poured out on specific churches or specific denominations. I did not say that. God's going to be ready to pour out His Shekinah glory on spe in specific regions and specific pockets of God's people. Okay? So we think that revival is just going to open up and pop up into a church or into a region. But I'm going to explain, if you've been following our messages, what we've been speaking on, you're going to understand what I'm saying is very biblical and it's very in order. Precept upon precept, line upon line. God is not confused. I think maybe his people are confused. Oh, yeah. And are liars. But God is not a liar. He is not man that he should lie. So I'm going to tell you right now, he is getting ready to pour out. How many of you show a raise of hands in your cars as you're listening? Keep one hand on the wheel and one hand up in the air. And those listening on Facebook Live, how many of you would like to be a pocket to carry the glory of God? Amen. Amen. Now, I can say, I can just prophesy, you're all going to be pockets. You're all going to carry the glory because Jesus died for you and it's for everybody. No, it's not. Oh, that's not biblical. I thought we're all going to, we all can have that. Nope. There are absolutely qualifications to be, uh, to carry pockets of, of his glory, to be a pocket carrier. All right. I'm going to say some things that are just so heavy. Okay. So I want you all just to really prepare and listen to what I'm about to say. We don't get on Facebook live and on KCWG to hear ourselves talk. We are literally on here. I mean, we're doing this out of a house. We broadcast everywhere that we can to get the word out to the nations what God is speaking. And this is what he is speaking. Anointing and glory are two separate things. The anointing and his glory are definitely two separate things. Both characteristics of heaven, of the Father himself. However, they are two separate things. I'm going to say something that might be offensive to many leaders that have, are listening but if it's offending you, then maybe this is how your particular church has been operating. But I will tell you right now, the anointing has caused such a problem in the body of Christ. And I'm going to explain why. The anointing is outward power. The anointing is outward power. However, the glory is inward presence. I think the time of the outward power... And the fun and games is pretty much over. Did I say that there's not going to be anointing, that there's not going to be power? I did not say that. However, when I begin to explain the scripture and we get into detail and we, we just dive into the text tonight, you're going to understand exactly what I'm saying. But the anointing will clothe you with great power. How many people would raise their hand and say, I want God's anointing. I want a great power. I want to flow in great power. We have to be very, very careful when we raise our hands and say that because the, the anointing will always display outward power, always, right? However, when it's mixed with character that has not been groomed, 
and that is 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 wicked or even in a lot of weakness that hasn't matured, that power is always going to exacerbate those things. That is what's happened to the body of Christ to date. We have anointed leaders. We have laid down, you know, laid hands and anointed uh, pastors and prophets. You know, now you're in the school of the prophet. I now anoint you to become a prophet. I now anoint you to be a pastor. I, I, you know, I anoint you. And what happens is a lot of spiritual parents are throwing olive oil around like they're basting a chicken. They're throwing olive oil around as if it's just they got it at Costco and bought some cold-pressed olive oil and threw it on the people. I, I, I know what I'm speaking about. And what happens is when you, when you throw that kind of anointing and that kind of power out, you now have so many children that don't know what to do with it, and some are using it in wicked fashions, but others just in simple weakness and they have not emerged and they have not grown and their character has not grown with the power. When they are not equal, when your power and your character are not, are, are, do not go side by side, we've got a problem. And the church is sideways. The church is upside down. Don't tell me what I'm saying is not true. I know our listeners out there will say absolutely. There are so many that are just a, a doggone mess out there. And so listen to this. I, I, I'm asking you to open your ears and really hear what I'm saying, okay? Even if you have to not look at me, the listeners on KCWG are listening. Facebook Live, you may just want to close your eyes for a moment. And I'm going to ask you to not look at the messenger and not look at what we're wearing, how we move our hands. You know what I mean? All the things that people do when they look at messengers or that I'm a woman or those types of things. But please close your eyes and really receive this into your spirit. Anointing will clothe you with a great power to lead others, to subdue nations, to shame the enemies of God, and accomplish His work on earth. You will be known by many because of your anointing. Your true character will be revealed by means of this power. It will touch the outward man and all will see it this anointing of outward power will unveil the inner resources or the lack thereof did everybody hear me that's powerful pastor brian yeah. we all want the anointing we all want to lay hands on people and let them fall out we want to see them shake we want to say it, see them, you know, whatever. We want people to see the the anointing is a visible. It is it's a visible characteristics characteristic of the Father, and so when we see anointing, we think, oh man, that's what I want. We'll be very careful. We've just watched what happened to Bill O'Reilly, very conservative, God fearing from what we know, man, and with. You know, there, there's obviously some type of problem with womanizing in, in the background. And now he, at, at this pivotal time of, of President Trump, he is now going to have to leave his show with Fox. I've been prophesying this for some time. You're going to see him leave the pulpits. You're going to see it from the White House, from the courthouse, and from the church house. And sadly, from your own house. And I'm going to explain why that's getting ready to happen. Okay? I'm not prophesying doom. I'm trying to prepare God's people for the greatest outpouring of God's glory that's ever, ever hit the earth, the four corners of the earth. This is a beautiful, beautiful message because we have so much to look forward to in our eight-year reprieve. Okay. So everybody understands the anointing, right, Pastor Brian? The anointing is powerful. It absolutely will cause you to subdue nations, take out your enemies, all of these kinds of things, right? Right? But we have to understand that's an outward power. Now I want to talk to you. Listen, the Bible's clear. When many, many were called out, and they were called out and anointed to serve under the anointing, right? So David, he was called out among his own brothers, and he was anointed. As, or, or, you know, or you may be anointed, Pastor Brian, like when you're sick. The Bible says in James, call the elders of the church. Anoint the sick that they may be healed. So that out, outward power, the outward manifestation to heal the person. It's an outward physical manifestation. Amen? You guys follow me? 
So leaders of many, many, many ministries have inaugurated and they've called into office and anointed other leaders. But your character is going to be exposed because the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. So you can even get your ordination online. Oh, yeah, I, I believe that. I know a few people have already. So. Right? And, and, those, and, and may I ask the people that you know that receive their uh, ordination papers online, what would you say their character is like? Oh, I, I know the backstory on them, so uh, their character is not, in my book, um, doesn't match up with the certificate that they got in the mail. What, the character, like, false? Fake, um, well, for one, for one, I know for sure, uh, uh, somebody that's ordained as a pastor is... is Living with his girlfriend? Yep, not married. Not married. Pictures of selfies of them all the time, on, all over Facebook and... Well, but everything hanging out. We do well, selfies. Well, but we don't do prophet selfies. But the yeah, just the <laughs> just the the clothing is inappropriate. So um, yeah, there's just a few things that that I have a problem with, and uh, you know, I can. Yeah. So I mean, so that's what we're saying is uh, the ordination, it you know, of anointing leaders. We are now about mark my words in this season. We are going to see who God has really called, and who man has called. Because the character is coming out. Now, the anointing calls out power to expose and highlight. And this has become very, very dangerous to the church. What we are calling out and what we are highlighting. If we are not consecrated and a holy people unto God, we can see exactly what's been highlighted in all of us. So, Alila, now let's raise our hand. How many of us want the anointing now? How many of us really want to be highlighted? Okay, so we've got to be very, very careful when we ask for that anointing, that there would be an outward power and manifestation, not only of all the moves and the things that, that come with that, with the, the move, move of God, but our character will also be exposed in that. You will hear, oh, I prayed for them, and so they got healed. You'll, you'll, you know what I mean? You'll heal, hear, oh, every time I do a meeting, they're, they're packed out. We have to do, you know, open up new venues. Your character will always be exposed. Oh, look at there's more people coming in. Look at all the people. Look at all the people coming. Yeah. And so there are many, Pastor Brian, that are anointed. They, they, they have been anointed to do this. However, that it's exposing the inner character of man. And this is a very dangerous thing. Now we want to talk about the glory. And we're, I, I hope you guys are really receiving this and ministering. It's a, it's a deep message. And so I'm going slow and, uh, you know, articulating what I want to say because when we get to the end of this and summarize what God's getting ready to do, you will have a, a good mindset. You'll be able to understand, okay, I understand anointing. Anointing is always outward power. So do I want to go after the anointing of God or do I want to go after the glory of God? And so the glory is inward presence inward presence it's not a gift did you hear me it's not a gift it's an inheritance it is an inheritance it's we need to understand it's not seen or worn on the outside but it's planted deep within the consecrated believer i'm going to say that again the glory is not an outside manifestation but it is planted deep within the consecrated believer. The glory is the only element that can actually change the human heart. Glory can only pour out through one who has a compound mixture in their past, in their background, of pain, of sorrow, and of crushing. Now... Does anybody want to be a carrier of the glory of God? Raise your hands now. I want to be a carrier of the glory of God. Amen. Because the glory of God is not a tangible thing. It's an atmosphere that we create in which the presence of God can dwell. There are tons of scriptures on all this. But this is not what I... Th th this is actually just a prelude to what I want to teach about the ark. Yeah. 
okay? But I wanted to make sure I build a foundation so we understand why someone can actually be killed, killed, or taken out under the glory of God. See, the church has been full of the anointing, but why can we lie to, our, to the pastors and say we're tithing and we don't? How can we fornicate? How can we be into pornography? How can we sit with our lesbian or gay lovers in church? How can we do all of this and not be taken out? Like in the days of Acts, oh, well, the day all throughout the Bible, yeah. but Ananias and Sapphira came before the, before the uh, uh, apostles of the church handing over their property, lying, and they were struck dead. That's the glory. The church has yet to see the glory of God manifested in the church. Do you hear, did anybody just hear what I said? What I'm saying is so deep, I'm telling you. We don't need revival. We need consecrated and set apart unto God that we can become carriers of the glory. Then revival is going to break out. Because when you get, I'm going to go ahead of myself here, but when you gather warriors that are actually carriers of the glory, you will smite the enemy without having to, oh, shana the Messiah and knock people out and knock them down to the floor. Now, that is of God. I mean, every time God prophet, every time the angel of the Lord came to Ezekiel, he had to say, get up, stand up, don't be afraid. Because when the natural comes in contact with the supernatural, something has to give. Remember, but I always tell people this, Brian, anything you see in the world, God, uh, Satan did not create that. God is the creator. Satan is the counterfeiter. God is the creator. Satan is the counterfeiter. So holy laughter is from God. Don't say it's not. It is, but the drunk came second. When people get drunk, they laugh like they've never laughed before because they are drunk. But when you laugh in the Holy Ghost, that was the original laughter. You didn't need to do drink and eat menudo after because you had a hangover. Hmm. Amen, Preston Roy, right? I mean, the true laughter came from God. So all of these signs and wonders, the world has just imitated it. But the problem is, when you have anointing with outward power, it will show you who really wants to be the schemer, who really wants to be the headliner, who really wants to be the star of the show. That outward power always manifests inward character. I'll say it again. The outward power of the anointing always manifests the inner character. And we are certainly in a time right now where everyone's character is being exposed. Is, aren't we, though? I agree, 100%. Yeah, things are coming out. If you look at the headlines and all these, uh, uh, a few mega, church, mega pastors and churches are, are uh, they're getting pulled out. They're, they're actually submitting or quitting or their congregation is yes. coming. This, this pastor has a problem. He needs to step down now. So they're, they're in the headlines everywhere. So you guys are going to see more of it. Yeah, I mean, we just really need to, of all times, be praying for the body of Christ, Amen. for sure. So what the, what the Lord was saying to me, the title of this message was Identifying End Time Carriers of the Glory. This will not be an all-inclusive club, club med vacation church. So all-inclusive vacations are ending, let me tell you right now. And when you go, I used to take my daughters back in the day when they were little, we always did club med vacations because all you had to do was pay one price. Is anybody catching that? All you had to do was pay one price, get on a plane, and everything you needed was at Club Med. You could, you could drink till you couldn't stand any longer. You could eat as much food till your stomach bursts. You could, you know, whatever you wanted to do, and you didn't need to leave a tip. Oh, dear God. Okay, I just, that one just came to me out right now. And you don't need to leave a tip. You don't need to bless anybody for their services because you already paid. And so I'm, get, I'm getting a download from the Holy Ghost as I'm speaking right now. As I'd already studied on all of this, but that other portion right now, that's going to have to go in our contaminated finance message that we're getting ready to launch. But when it's all inclusive, the believer now is led into the church to believe that Jesus paid the price. There's nothing you need to do. It's already been done. It's done deal. He did it all. Sit recline back in your pew, go ahead and grab your latte, and just listen to the 20-minute message, 
That's all you need to do. Oh, and don't bother, don't, you listen to all the messages, but don't bother giving. You don't have to give. It's all inclusive. The price has already been paid. You didn't have to come with money. You didn't have to come with anything. You just sit there. You didn't even have to come with character. You just sit there at the Club Med Vacation. And that is what God is saying is the churches have become a Club Med Vacation, all-inclusive, and that time is over. Yeah, make it super comfortable. Make it so they're, you're relaxing and everything's okay and just breeze right through it. Amen. And we spoke now on when I... I I spoke on uh, uh, Isaiah 43 about forgetting the former things. And mostly you always hear, and that's the Isaiah scripture I gave you all. And that's where you always hear, um, God's doing a new thing. He's getting ready to do a new thing. And, you know, it's time. But Isaiah 43, we posted that message as well on the YouTube. And what we, did, what we explained was that forget the former things. It actually means to, um, to not even reconsider the good things. Don't go back to old lovers. Don't go back to old revivals. Don't go back. Don't revisit. Nor even in your mind, the Bible says to actually forget. And so why would the Lord ask us to do that? Because when we remember those old things and we, we hold on to those memories and that's the way we did revival and that was a great time and this is the way we always have done church. We've always done it this way. It's always been a pastor and it's always been an associate pastor and then it's been five elders and the Lord's saying forget the former things because if you hold on to those old lovers, those things that went well or didn't go well, it will always skew your perspective for the new move. And what the Holy Ghost is saying to the church today is, listen, the principles of God never change, but his methods do. Come on now. If Jesus could loogie into mud, spit into mud, and then, you know, compound that and put it on a blind, blind man's eyes, do you not think his methods are always changing? He changes his methods to always keep us on our toes. His principles don't. The word of God never changes, but his methods do. So if we don't walk out Isaiah 43 and forget those former things, then we won't be able to move into the new thing. And that's going to lead us into the qualifications to be a carrier of the glory. So in 1 Samuel 7, 1, one scripture I just wanted you to read, and it says, So the men of Kiriath, Jerium, came and took the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house on the hill and consecrated Eleazar, his son, to have charge of the ark of the Lord. How about you old-time, uh, you know, ministers listening to this broadcast right now? Does anybody hear about consecration and holiness anymore? We don't hear that kind of preaching too much, right? I'm bringing it back. I am go I'm going to bring it back. The Lord is saying that you must be consecrated. They consecrated Eleazar in order to carry the glory, to carry the ark. The end time warriors have got to be consecrated. I'll tell you that right now. So that was just 1 Samuel 6, 1. But now the main text in 2 Samuel 6, it says, Again, David gathered all of the choice men of Israel, 30,000 of them. And David arose with all the people who were with him. And from there, they, took the, they brought up the ark of the Lord of hosts to dwell between the cherubim. 2 Samuel 6, now verse 3. So they set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abamadab, which was on the hill. And Uzzah, the son of Abadab, like Dabadabadu, I don't know if this was like Barney Rubble, but he's Abinabadabadu. Okay. And he drove the new car. <laughs> I just saw Barney Rubble's little feet driving the new car with his little foot, remember? Yeah. All right. All right. And so they brought it out of the house, which was on the hill, accompanying the ark of God. In verse 5, then David and all the house of Israel played music before the Lord, all kinds of instruments of wood and harps and stringed instruments and cymbals. And when they came to the threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God. He took hold of it for the oxen stumbled. The anger of the Lord was aroused and God struck him dead for his error. Now, I know many people have read this. I, I've been hearing this for years. Like, why would God be so mean? Like, why? The man was just trying to keep the ark from falling. Why would God do that? 
you know what? It's for today's message. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Because we need to understand why the glory of God is so important. Because the Bible is written to prepare us literally for the second coming of Jesus. We need to be prepared. And the second coming of Jesus is going to require literally a consecrated people. Not a club med vacation all-inclusive church. We must, we must understand the scripture. So when he reached out, he was killed, right? And David was angry because of the Lord's outbreak. I mean, who knows what kind of friend he was. Well, that could have been his good friend. They could have had a conversation, Brian, before the ark and said, Hey, dude, after we deliver this ark, you know, want to go, you know, throw stones somewhere? Or, you know, you want to go shoot, you know, shoot arrows after this whole event's over? And then he, he's killed for trying to stop the ark from falling. Right? So David is visibly upset about it. But we need to understand, listen, pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists, apostles, prophets, man, you cannot be about the people and not what God is trying to speak. We cannot worry to be, uh, speak these messages that we're worried about offending God's people. We have got to be more concerned about the fear of the Lord and what is he saying to his leaders in order to prepare the church for what's coming. And, you know, the scripture does go on and, uh, you know, talks about, you know, where the ark ended up remaining and, and some things. But I want to get into the six, the, uh, the four areas that the Lord showed me from this scripture that we must, we must be qualified. Um, if you go back to the YouTube, Brian, we put up a message on the churches in her qualifying rounds. The church is in her qualifying rounds. Yes. And that that may, I, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that. And I explain how the church is in her qualifying rounds and what God is doing to qualify us. So if we're in the qualifying rounds, what are we trying to be qualified for? We're saved, right? I am, you are, we're saved. He's qualifying us to be pockets to carry the glory, to house the glory. That's what we are all being prepared for now because this great and mighty outpouring is getting ready to take place. And he is looking for a people that will be qualified. So the first thing in 1 Samuel, we talked about consecrated. In order not to be anointed, you know, we'll lay hands and people will fall out and we'll see the, oh, she's so anointed. He's so anointed. Okay, all of that, right? But I cannot wait for, uh, to hear people say, wow, prophet Prophet Gina really does house the glory of God. Amen. She is a pocket for the glory. We need to send that pocket to this nation, to this nation, to this nation, so that pocket can bring the atmosphere where God can dwell. We need churches. We need mountains of influence. We need to be carriers of the glory so when we walk into those regions, the atmosphere changes. Why? Because we're so anointed? Because we carry so much power of outward power and manifestation? Or is it because when you walk into a room, when you walk into your job, I mean, I went into the doctor's office and the doctor spent, all because of my rotator cuff today, she spent all this time talking about me. And I won't say the things she said, but, but everything was about me. And, every, and I thought, my God, we brought the glory of God into where the doctor was asking me for wisdom. The doctor was asking me and telling me she needed help. I should have turned around and asked her to pay me. Hmm. Right? Brian, did that not happen? No, it's 100% it's true. And it, it happens everywhere we go. And it's not that we feel like we're better than anybody, anything like that. But you're going to live out the way your body's going to reflect the, what you carry on the inside. And it's just, it's a simple, it's a simple teaching. It's, it's basic, but they, it's, it's basically, you are what you eat. They, mm -hmm. they, people always say it all the time. And she was asking us, like, she was telling my wife, you know, I want to look like you. And we came to her for help, and she's going to get an MRI on her, her arm and her shoulder and all that. But she left there encouraged and said, you fired me up. You got me to where I want to eat healthy again and things yes. like that. So that's a testimony, just us. That's yes. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what we want to do. We want to change lives, right? Power doesn't always change lives. We need to house the glory because the glory will always be an inward presence. And if we can carry that glory into everywhere we go, hearts will actually change. 
Why do you think people fall out in church and then go back and talk behind somebody's back? Why do you think that people go up for healing and people fall out into their Holy Ghost and then they go on Facebook and make fun of people or, or they gossip and they slander? Because the anointing is always an outward power. But the glory is always an inward manifestation of the presence of God. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to tick a lot of people off. Not everybody is going to house the glory. It isn't for everybody. Why? The church is in our qualifying rounds. You have got to be qualified. Oh, but Prophet Gina, he did it all already for us. It's already done. No, you've got to do your work now. The Bible says you shall do as he did. Be perfect as I am perfect. Right? Do unto others as you would have done unto you. Do, do, go. It's a verb. Why do you think Mormons do so many good works? They took the truth. The enemy gave them truth and twisted it. And so now it's all perverse that they're saved by their works and all the things that they do. But do not discount works. We have got to be a body of Christ that we say what we do and then we do what we say. Now, number two, how are we doing on time, Sweepy? So David arose and he went with all the people who were with him. Again, I'm in 2 Samuel chapter 6. I strongly encourage you to read that before you go to bed and ask for the glory. <laughs> ask for the glory. And so David arose and he went with all the people who were with him. Now, remember, the ark, people, they had already brought it in. Some, you know, that all the people that were with him. So, verse two, uh, number two point of qualifications to carry the glory, surround yourself with choice people. Now, that is going to be a very difficult number two. Number one, you may say, okay, I can do that. I want to be a pocket that carries and houses the glory. Yes, I will dedicate myself. I will set myself apart. That sounds kind of easy, right? I mean, it's, for some it's not, but me, I mean, I'll, you know... Uh, when God says he wants me to do something, I'll set myself apart. I will do that. You know, I even worked out today and who knew my arm, my arm was in so much pain. I'm like, you know what? I'm still going to train. I'm still going to work out. And Brian, you know, was teaching me don't use the bad, you know, just because some one body part's bad, you focus on the good and work on the good. And that's, that's, that's for somebody out there. But we have to surround ourselves with choice people. Now, who is going to do that? You might all say, oh, I'll do that. I'm going to tell you right now. We counsel so many people that are remaining in marriages where the husband or the wife doesn't come home on the weekends. Christians. Christians. Doesn't come home on the weekends. Smokes weed. Brings it into the house. Does drugs. Uh, yells, screams to completely demonic stuff. All right? And yet, you want to house the glory, but you are going to remain in that situation? Are you serious? Listen. Number two, qualification, honey, to be a carrier of the glory. This number two, surround yourself with choice people. This right here, I believe, is going to knock out so many of our listeners. Yeah. Because they're scared to make the right move. Yeah. They, they want to stay in the job because they're making so much money. However, they know it's compromising their family time, their time with their spouses. They can't give good quality. One of the um, congressmen I was watching on Fox, he want, he's retiring. He said he's on the road 350 you know, days, something ridiculous. And he said, I need to be with my wife now. And you know, he said, I am going to leave this job so that I can be more with my family. And the interviewer that was interviewing him is a, is a broadcaster himself, and he, he couldn't understand it, couldn't even comprehend He's a it. conservative Christian. He was like, uh, but but what about your job? What about your career? What, what about, about Trump just came into office? And Yeah, he's, yeah. he's like, man, my family's more important. I, I'm not going to get these years back, and I can, totally, Amen. I can totally relate to this man. So he's going to be a carrier of the glory because, number one, he's consecrating, setting himself apart, Number two, he's surrounding himself with choice people, his own family. Now, that I'm going to tell you, this is going to be the difficult part for you guys. You have got to, you've got friends that you've been with for years that are dragging you down. They don't encourage you. They don't share the same vision even maybe. Maybe not even just discouraging. Maybe they're in the same place, in a good place, but you are in a heavenly place. God has got your head in the clouds, and yet 
you're still staying around these people, around these uh, support groups, or you keep going to this meeting or that meeting, knowing that these are not the choice people that God has for you. This is going to be very important to be an end time carrier of the glory. Number three, you, uh, let's continue reading because it's in number three. And when the ark of God, when they set the ark of God upon a new cart and they brought out, that they brought out up the hill, all the, the sons of Abendob drove the new cart. Okay, the glory was housed on a new cart. Number three, we've got to be open to new methods and new moves of God. You know, we have a lot of people say, wow, you guys are so different. You know, we walk into Robin's, Robin's Brothers Engagement Store where we got our ring and uh, for them to clean it for us. And the social media man happened to be there. He's like, oh my, your guys, you guys are so out of the box. Like, what you guys do, this is so amazing. And yet we have, you know, we've ministered to leaders that don't even embrace what we do. They just, you know, I've given them prophecies. I've spoken to them. You know, and, and, and they just move on and they, they just don't pay me no no mind. But, you know, I'm going to tell you, the the ones that are open to new methods, if they don't want to do things the same the way it's always been done, they're going to receive Truth and Love Ministry International. They're going to receive a former, you know, king of the cage champion that rear naked choked and knocked people out. But David knocked people out. Joshua Caleb, they were warriors, but we've raised up warriors and tolerant leaders. That's why you look so foreign to people. They don't, they can't see you, but that's just not, well, but that's not true uh, because there are people that are seen and, and, you know. It's starting, uh, I believe what's happening, I believe what's happening is, is relationships are being built. Yes. And I believe that we are so out of the box and so, uh, What's the word? I'm on the cutting for? edge of... We, that people might just be a little too afraid to acknowledge us or be associated with us because they're not used to this new thing coming in. But a lot of people are used to the old thing. And I'm going to tell you what, the old thing will work about halfway. But if you want this thing to break, if you, want, if you want something to bust out, I'm telling you, bring in some people that have some fire, some new fire, some new blood, some new anointing, some new... That carried yes. that house the glory. Amen. And watch what happens. You, Amen. You take someone like my wife, and you team her up with someone like Wendy Alec. Well, we're already a team. Okay. Yes. But I'm talking about on a major platform and in front of thousands of people. You watch what happens. You watch. Yes. Mark my words. Watch what happens. Watch revival break out in such a crazy way because this is new. This is new fire. This and and to be honest with you, I think I'm. I think we're the only couple right now in the world. Do your research. Let me know and tell me if there's somebody that you know that's a that's a couple, a ministry that has a professional MMA fighter and a prophet teamed up together. I think we're the only ones in the whole world. Well, hopefully we'll I, raise up more of them. Then. I, you know what? I I, I promise you we'll raise up more of them. I promise you. Amen. And that's what God is doing right now. Is the, the, you have to surround yourself with choice people. And we I've been doing that for years. And then once Pastor Brian and I married, that has just been, it's been exclusive. I mean, we have just been very, very careful when we team up. And, and God is doing that. He is, I want to encourage you. If, if you have already pretty much, I mean, of course, we continually go through consecration. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But if you have dedicated yourself and set yourself apart, and these past few years you have felt so lonely, some of you a single, waiting for your, your, your husband or your wife to come to you, but you have consecrated you yourself, you've surrounded yourself with choice people, and you are just open to whatever God wants to do in your life. You, I'm telling you, He is drawing all those. I mean, you know, for, I have, like I said, I've been ministering to many people that, you know, many would know, and, and they receive me just to a point and leave. And I'll tell you, you know, Wendy Alec and I, she has just, just won. This is, you know, from God TV's founder. What an amazing woman. And I'll tell you, God is doing such a beautiful sisterhood, such a, a, a love story uh, between us right now. And um, there are many that are need. You don't have no idea, you guys, how many leaders are really needing prayer and really needing help right now because we have been set apart to be carriers of the glory 
And, and it, anybody can get anointed. Anybody can lay hands because, listen, the Lord says the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You will cast out demons and they will be delivered. You will speak in a new tongue. You will see signs and wonders. But will you be a carrier of the glory? Do you want to be someone that houses the presence on the inside that maybe nobody actually sees all the HR fluff and stuff? But they see that there's something different about you. A carrier of the glory will change an atmosphere. I tell you, I go into places and people, they'll mock me or they'll say mean things to me or they'll completely walk away from me or they'll magnet to me. So the ones that want that presence and that glory and then want to be in that atmosphere, they're not quick to run away from it. They're quick to run to it. But the ones that aren't ready for it, and I want to encourage the leaders out there, if, listen, listen, Team Unbreakable, KCWG listeners, if people are leaving you, it's because they cannot stay with you. The glory of God is being housed in a vessel that the, the only choice people can be around that kind of a, a manifestation. Are you understand what I'm saying? So we have to, number three, we have to be open to new methods and new moves. Is everybody open to that? Or do you still want to do your interviews on a platform and, you know, or do you still want to, you know, sing a song, do the PowerPoint? All that's good in its place. I'm, I'm not putting it down. I, I'm not. But what I'm saying is what if God wants his people to take on the city, run up the walls, great is the army that carries out his word. What if he wants us to take over those seven mountains of influence? What if he wants us to go outside of those walls and be carriers of the glory and get outside and get into the entertainment industry? See, religious spirits are mocking the shack. And I even read someone say, even the elect are being led astray by this movie. And, and people that I love, they really are being led astray by it. I'm going to tell you right now, God is 100% using that movie. You can go into universalism. You can go into the guys. Go and do whatever you want to do. I'm going to tell you right now, God is using and he is speaking through that movie in such a way. And that movie is taking over the media mountain. So mock it, say the elect, or I've been led astray. But I really caution you to be very, very careful about that because I've been in the presence of God and under the glory cloud when he spoke to me about that movie. And he didn't go on about the man and the universalism and all. He didn't go to, he said, I am using this movie to separate the humble from the haughty. That's what he told me. So we are finding out who's humble and haughty, right? Number four, then David and all the house of Israel played the music before the Lord and all kinds of instruments. So, what is the one of the four, the last, well, there are more qualifications, but I'm going over these four. Symbolically, the four corners of the earth. So, the qualifications to carry the glory is worship. You have to be a worshiper. You, you can't not be a worshiper, Pastor Brian. He, those who worship him in spirit and in truth are the ones that are going to house the glory of God. And I want to say this because I know we're kind of come to a close, but, uh, one of the I had a vision at Women's Aglow years ago uh, when I was with Dutch Sheets, and I saw the dam burst and break open, and all the water go everywhere, and all the believers were standing. Some of them in that flood of water uh, fell out, and others were standing. And I talked to Dutch Sheets about it, and he had told me that's the glory of God, Gina. You're seeing the glory of God that's getting ready to cover the earth. My vision that I had back in I think '96 maybe. Um, is now ha is now getting ready to happen. I'm getting ready to be able to see this with my own eyes, and that is the amazing part. But now I want to caution everybody. I want to caution everybody. When Uzzah touched the ark, when he touched the glory, he was struck dead. There are dreamers that are getting ready to come forth right now, but the schemers are going to get ready to be removed. You cannot steal somebody's dream, and you cannot steal the glory. You, God says, no one will glory in my presence. You, no one will glory outside of that. No flesh will glory in my presence. That's why flesh has got to go. God's not going to allow it in this end time harvest, in this end time move. As you see the pockets of glory go, he's going to send glory carriers all around the world to start fires of glory. And that's how you're going to see revival. You must have someone that houses the glory in order to see revival start, Pastor Brian. Amen. 
Amen. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing a few things pop up on the screen of, of uh, how do I, what do I do? How do I do it? Um, what am I supposed to do? And I don't want to go backwards and things like that. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't go back to the basics and, and see what my wife, Prophet Gina Guy Warren, has written down here, this is a, a, a little blueprint for you guys to go by. She told you some key things in there. Worship the Lord. Consecrate yourself. And what does that mean? So, surround yourself with, with the right yeah. people that can mm -hmm. take you to the next level. Amen. Or, or, or that are going to encourage you and lift you up and build you up. Amen. And open to new methods. Be open to new methods. The old ways work, and you can take some nuggets from the old ways. Yes. Okay? I, I, took, I took some major things at the last few conferences that we've been at. I took some major nuggets, and I have, I believe... Our puppy, sorry. Those always run around. I believe that, you know, yes. when, it, when it's time, that there's a few key things that need to be said, and there needs to be a move. There needs to be a move of the Spirit. But when things, but, but if you notice, guys, at most all revivals, if you notice, how does, how does this, how does the atmosphere change? Amen. There's a worshiper that comes in. Amen. Somebody that's anointed to do worship, Right? There can be the wrong people up there too, and you can feel nothing. This the whole thing can just be quenched. But when you have the right person with the right spirit that you know is in line with the Lord, you can just tell right. We can just tell right away now. And I want to say, you said someone said I don't want to miss it. You, whoever said that, you're not going to miss it. I'll tell you why. Because you're asking the right question. Because you're asking, you're not going to miss it. The Lord said, if you would ask for bread, would I give you a stone? Because listener. You are asking, I don't want to miss this move. I want to be a pocket that carries the glory, which is the presence, the atmosphere-changing presence of God Almighty. If you are asking for that, I guarantee you, He will show you. He will show you. Dedicate this to me. Get this away. I want you consecrated. I want this out of your life. Will you do it? Oh, but I'm comfortable. Will you do it? Yes, Lord, I'll do it. Second, I need you to surround yourself with choice people. The ones that you're going out to coffee with or you're talking to or you're hobnobbing with. Those aren't the people I'm at. I need you to separate from that. That one that's abusing you. I've been telling you, get away from that for how long? You need to make that decision now if you want to house the glory. You've got to be open to new moves, new methods. Really, like Pastor Brian said, an MMA fighter? And a prophet, so, oh, but God doesn't want us to be fighters. That's not right. That's violent. God wouldn't use that. Well, I don't know what Bible we're reading or not reading. But listen, that they have to be open to new moves. That the word and the workout will house literally workouts in conferences and churches with thousands of people yes. exercising while we're on the platform with big screens leading you. That's church. That's going to be a new way of church. People in wheelchairs with dumbbells working out, fit people, all shapes, all sizes, all fitness levels. That's going to be church. That's going to be a new move. How many people want that in their church now? I'm going to throw this nugget out there, guys. Amen. And this is something that's been stirring in my spirit ever since, well, for a long time now, for a few years. And I always ask, why, God, why'd you put me in this, uh, what, this MMA arena and Amen. do this and go through these fights and get all these injuries and, and all that stuff? But then... If something happens, my wife will tell you, something happens when I hold mitts for somebody. Something happens when I work with somebody, how I encourage them. Yes. Their confidence goes from here to here. They become somebody that they've never been before. And they Amen. see, I figure out what their weapons are. I figure what they can do good. And I focus on those things. And I just kind of avoid the things that they don't, they're not very good at. Yes. But I build them up. And, and God is looking for new leaders and doing things a different yes, way. Yes, a different a style. A new way, a new Amen. way, guys. You know, and, uh, and, and, and what, what um, spouse doesn't want theirs, who doesn't want a spouse that looks good? And that's healthy Who doesn't happy. want a spouse that, Endorphins. that that's, takes yeah. care of themselves, that can uh, be motivated to, to keep themselves uh, looking good? And, and, and you want to you yes. be attracted to your spouse, okay? And not only that, but, but when I work with the men, it builds their confidence up to go back to their wife and to be a man and to act like a man. And, and I'm going to tell you guys right now, if, if your husband isn't treating you good, it's because his confidence is low. If he had confidence, he would treat you better. And yes, I'm just going to leave amen, it at that. Amen. And if he doesn't already. But I, I just pray that this is a, a blessing to you yes. guys, what we've spoken of you today. And yes, uh, there's so amen. much more we can go on. But 
But that yes. we're running out of time. So yeah, I just want to thank and, you guys. And we're also going to ask that you would pray for us. Uh, we have a court date tomorrow. Uh, can you imagine someone served a restraining order on two pastors? So, yeah, we're in court at 1 o'clock tomorrow. It's, it's kind of a joke. But um, we're going to ask you guys to cover us in prayer uh, for the judge to see right through it all. And, uh, hey, we've been prophesying White House, Courthouse, Church House. Now the prophet and the, the pastor have to go into the courthouse. We're in the courthouse, guys. Hey. Who's trying to restrain us? <laughs> you know what? Hey, the devil's been trying to restrain our finances. He's been trying to restrain us from all different levels. So on, on, on that being said, Amen. that being said, guys, if this message was a blessing to you, don't be one of those dying and dashers. Don't just come in and dine and take off and, and go to the next prophet on the next segment. Okay? Bless the prophet. Bless your pastor. Amen. We want to thank you guys for joining us. You can click on the donate button on the Facebook uh, Truth and Love Ministry site right there. Um, you can also go to our website, www.tnlmi.org. Okay? Uh, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, guys, sow a seed. It's good ground. We want to thank you guys for joining us. Until next time, um, if yeah. you have prayer requests or anything like that, go to the website as well. Also share this video. And we want to thank KCWG, The Truth Radio, for having us in the studio. Woo woo! Amen. When was it yesterday? The day before? I don't know. Uh, day Man, before yesterday. Things are moving so fast. But we love KCWG, The Truth. Make sure you go to their page as well. Tell them how much you guys like and to hear from them. And uh, thank you guys for being a Amen. part of this. Amen. We love you guys. God, God bless, bless you all. Hey, give me a kiss. Mm, love you, baby. Love you guys. Thank you, KCWG. Share this with your friends, guys. God bless you.